enhancing Nigeria's economic prospects in 2024. And uh, you will agree with me that industrialization holds the key to unleashing Nigeria's full potential. We can strengthen our economy by investing in industries and promoting local production, which will help reduce our dependence on imports. I've been joined this morning to talk about this issue uh, by um, Bruno Ibekilo. Bruno Ibekilo is the head of department, economics department, Chukwemeka Odumego Juku University, Ibariam. Welcome to the studio, Bruno. Thank you so much. It's good to have you around. Nice. Happy New Year. Same to you, man. Nice <laughs> to see you again. All right. Let's run. I don't know. How true could this statement be that industrialization holds the key to unleashing Nigeria's full potential, uh, strengthening our economy by investing in industries? It's going to help to uh, reduce our dependence on import. How true could this statement be? It's, it's clearly true. It's obvious. Um, this one is that, the, the, this one you can say, um, sometimes they say that it's clear that even a blind man can see. When you industrialize your economy, you're talking about uh, creating enablers for industries to thrive. Okay? It's not about governments trying to go and build industries. Sometimes you hear people say that government should build industries so that youth, our youth should be, will be gainfully employed but you can create an ambulance where industries can spring up is a way of uh, uh, increasing local production of goods and services and you cannot be talking about enhancing economic uh, growth percent potentials without uh, production because economics is all about uh, exchange the major thing is about production and exchange of uh, goods and services so if, if we are going to look at industrialization as the bedrock of trying to imp uh, enhance the prospects of our growth, then we need to be serious about that. So it's about finding ways to increase the number of industries we have in the country, finding ways to open up the market, because you don't just produce, because we say that a good is, uh, that production is incomplete until it gets to the consumer. So as you are producing, you create market for the goods, creating market for the goods. You empower people who buy the goods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a cycle where you produce, you sell, and then the people who are selling the goods to, you are selling the goods, we use the money you pay them, you know, to, while working for you. It's just relationship between firm and the households. So these are the things that need to be put in place. <coughs> okay, so, okay, now, uh, before now, uh, we know that Nigeria has so many industries. In the mm -hmm. 70s, in the 80s, we have textile, industries, mm -hmm. we have cocoa industry, we mm -hmm. have car manufacturing industries around and so many others. Even there, there's, there's one industry that I, I usually pass that has been overgrown in Delta State there. The, and, steel, uh, the steel industry. Yes, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, our refineries working perfectly mm -hmm. before now. So where did we miss it? What actually happened to Nigeria that we are grappling, struggling every day? to meet up economically? What happened is that we lost sight of what we are supposed to be doing. You know, like you have a child in school, the child was doing well at a lower class, as the child is getting to a higher class, you see that the child is not doing well again. Mm -hmm. So you start to ask yourself, what happened? Like we are asking now. But we didn't start to check early. Because sometimes you see some indicators of a decline in the economy. But our economic managers or, or those in government will not pay attention to that. Uh -huh. Once you start to um, play with certain things that are important, first of all, you look at an economy, you look at <clears throat> how does this thing start to change. You look at your stock exchange market. You now see that the investment in the stock exchange market is going down. From there, from stock exchange market, you see that there is food inflation. People are not even able to produce food. The price of food is going up. I'm talking about those basic things that doesn't matter. And when, once food is becoming expensive, it's down to that the income of the, of, the, of the fixed income earners or income, general income level will start to go down because the value of the income, the real value of the income will start to go down. Mm -hmm. You're not spending more on food just to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. So outside feeding, outside, the money is to be spent outside feeding will now be reduced. So patronage to these industries will start to go down mm -hmm. for consumer firms, for consumer industry firms. Therefore, 
semi semi processed uh, products. You've talked of our steel companies, you've talked of car manufacturing companies, you've talked of a lot of other things. They will start to face challenges in acquiring raw material, challenges in infrastructure. By the time you are those time you are referring to now, if another do we used to have relative stability in power. At least you can open your tap and see water in some other places. The roads we are better off or good. But and the tap is not even borehole then. The tap was not borehole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if I, when you start to sink money, when this thing started, when governments refused to or failed to provide this infrastructure, mm -hmm. you now see firms try, trying to one you provide your own water, you sink your own borehole, mm -hmm. you provide your own security, you pay these private security firms. You have generators running up and down, say 250 kV at this way, 250 kV at this way. All of them running a, um, in four, four hours, it took cover up for eight hours of work time. And you can imagine the price of one liter of uh, diesel. And those generators can take about 10 to 7 to 10 liters of diesel mm -hmm. an hour. So you're talking about, about in thousands mm -hmm. per hour. Multiply by eight. If they're working for eight hours, then if, if they're those doing shifts, just you multiply it by the number of hours they're going to work. So you see that a lot of overhead, a lot of overhead expenditure has, has increased. And by the time you know it, some of them cannot stand the pressure again. And again, remember, our system is weak. People depend on imports. These firms that are struggling to produce are facing imported uh, competition. And they are facing the important competition. Our taste. Our test bots for imported goods are high. So our, our, our taste and the demand for imported goods will now shift to those imported ones, which may be relatively cheaper. So now this guy is now facing cost, overhead cost, increasing overhead cost, and again, facing low demand for his commodity. Mm -hmm. So that's, over time, we now see that this firm starts to do what? Short. And some of them will do what? Leave the country. Like, like we are experiencing. Like we are experiencing now. Now, now uh, when we talk about enhancing Nigeria's economic prospect in 2024, mm. uh, the younger generations may be looking at us and um, do we actually have prospects, economic prospects in this nation? And uh, I don't know. We, we, we have this, um, this thing with Abba, Abia mm. State. You mm. know, mm. Over, over time, I've had government you know, they talk about it a bit, and uh, it, it, may be jo it may end up on papers mm. or what we speak on television, on radio. Mm. At the end of the day, nothing happens. And I don't know whether this government is going to do something about it, especially the new governor of Abia State. Now, the, the clothes we wear today, you know, their, 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 their stitches or how they were sewn, you hardly recognize you think it's foreign mm. you know mm. i don't know do we have what, what's the prospect we are looking at when we talk about enhancing nigeria's economic prospect in 2024 uh, the possibility of uh, enhancing the prospects are there the prospects are already there it's not like we are trying to enhance the prospects mm. because sometimes we hear people trying to say that they are going to abroad for greener pasture okay you say greener pasture, and I ask, the pasture here, is it, was it green? At all. Before it started going for greener one abroad. Mm -hmm. So people are going to abroad to look for green pasture because the pasture here is brown and dry. Mm -hmm. So we are not trying to enhance the prospects of growth in Nigeria. We are trying to foster growth. The prospects of growth are here already in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There is no state in Nigeria that doesn't have a resource. But there are countries abroad that doesn't have one resource, natural resource. Yeah. So, and these countries have grown. Indonesia does not have oil. Sorry, Singapore. They don't have oil, crude oil. But Singapore is a net exporter of petroleum products. Today. Yes, so what they do is that they import oil, refine, use in their country, and they export the balance. Now, but in Nigeria, we have everything. So the problem is, how do we foster this growth? Mm -hmm. Make it that is to be sustainable over time, not in terms of environmental impact mm -hmm. or the future, just to, keep, to make it to flow over time. What we have in Aba is just a fragment of 
what we growth should, should be. Okay. I'm sure this thing you're wearing may be from Turkey okay. or Vietnam. But what I'm wearing was made in the site here. Okay. So if we start from there, you, us, what you are wearing, where was it made? Is it Abba? Mm. So you look at that Abba. Abba can supply an Nigerian army. Boots. Boots, shoes. Uh, that's all the armed forces and okay. paramilitary. Okay. So who among us is buying, among all these agencies of government is buying from Abba? Now, these are the areas we have to start. That, that person who is producing in Abba, does he have steady light at 600 naira a liter or 650 naira a liter? And they, it takes you about one liter an hour for the smallest gen. Some take more than that an hour. So for, for about seven hours, you're going to work. You're going to spend 670, call it 700 naira times about 10 hours. That's 7,000 naira only. You know, I, I will remember. So, I will remember when we were much younger. Mm. I think before they, when when they want to, uh, maybe work on some of their. They, uh, Nepal want to work mm. on. They will give you. Uh, they will announce. They will announce on radio <laughs> that, they that like, there will not be light between. So -so yes, and, so -so and you you will be prepared. And mm. one thing I've noticed in this nation is that when something goes down, it hardly comes up again. It hardly comes, it comes up. And when up. something goes up, like prices, it mm. hardly comes, comes down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So we are moving from different stages of decay. Mm. The first stage was that, like you said here, NEPA then will announce that there's going to be um, removing a power supply mm. from so and so time to so and so time that you can please bear with them. Then it was NEPA, monopolist. Now we decentralized the system, broke it down to generation, um, wow. transmission, and the distribution. Has it gotten better? Yes, I can say some areas in this state now have up to 18 hours of light. Mm. But these areas in this state, are they really industrial hub or are they residential areas? Mm. So these are, the these are the priorities we need to start to address. First of all, we need to encourage people to think. At the time, India had this thing about think India and buy India. With a population of 1.2 billion, India moved on. And today, India started moving away from that primary production. We're still talking about sewing clothes, mm. being able to produce our food, mm. being able to generate enough electricity, being able to uh, produce enough fuel that can, we can use to power our industries. Okay, We've, We are talking about going to the next stage. We're still talking about... So India was able to move away from that. And India today is about the medical tourist center for most developing countries. Mm. People go to India for medical treatment. So. What are we doing here? So we need to start thinking of ways to move away from these basic necessities we are still grappling to provide for ourselves. The prospects are there. We're talking about how to do what? Make it flow over time. The potentials are there. We know that. Look at our number of states. If you say producing in Aba, the market in Orange are here is enough, is, is, is great to do what? Empty the whole Aba. All right, all, all, all right. now let's, let's look at the, the markets we have mm. and the, the productions we make here and uh, why it seems uh, people are dependent on mm. imported products. Sometimes when you go to this market, there is th this main market you're seeing, there's one they carved and they call it Biafra market or something, mm. is very close to the river Nige or whatever. Mm. And you, when you go there to buy things, somebody that has eye for quality mm. may not really like what the person gets there. Now, I don't know, how, where do we see the place of um, quality in mm. what we do? Like the clothes you're wearing is made, the making, uh, you know, or the sewing is beauty is good. <laughs> you know, when somebody sees, the person may like, <sighs> like to ask you, where did you make mm. this clothes? Clothes. Take yeah. me to that place. Mm. So do we begin to, you know, talk about when you want to do something, doing it well, so that you know people mm. will begin to patronize it and forget about imported products. The market is always stratified mm. across the tiers of uh, in, across the um, strata of income level. Okay. High income earners can afford high quality materials or well made mm. uh, products, no matter the price. Okay. Then low income earners can always go for those ones that are okay. Because now nobody is not showing size. Mm -hmm. uh, so if 
giving my level or somebody who is at uh, another level may not be able to there are quality things out there but that thing is that we have this disenchantment for what is our own mm -hmm. some people will have a name like uh, Jennifer but they will prepare to, prepare, prepare to be called Jennifer this our this uh, this uh, mentality imposed on us by our colonizers has remained with us. We've not been able to remove that veil from our faces that mm -hmm. what is local can be better. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Where 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 are those days where we prepare our tas with mano and our normal ugly and uh, and uh, onion and then enjoy our roasted yam? Today people prefer maybe chips fried and all you know. These are, the, these are the changes we have allowed to overcome us over time. That the, clothes, that the quality of the clothes, or that the clothes was not well sewn, does not mean that the person who is sewing the clothes cannot improve. Mm -hmm. What comes with specialization and efficiency is patronage. Mm -hmm. As the person is producing over time, you find out that the person will be imp improving. improving. Those guys you are seeing in Aba, they didn't just wake up one day and become better. You go to about today, somebody is making buttonholes, somebody is putting on, button, um, uh, putting on the button, somebody is making moving. Somebody is, that is, in one cloth, four persons will be involved at four different points of production. Mm. So at the other end of it, what you're getting is your trials about four different persons who are involved in it. So for each one, they are doing their improving. So these are one of the things we have to start doing here, mm. encouraging people to do what? Break down the different phases of production of that material. Mm. So that the one you're doing, you become better over it over time, which is not trying to do everything uh, by yourself. That is where we come to talk, talk about the uh, mentorship, mm -hmm. training. Do we have that opportunity for them to come and be trained for free? So at the point you got more lucrative, teaching people how to make money than going to make money for yourself. Mm -hmm. And some people cast in on that. Every time on the radio you see you hear them coming, come to this so and so hotel, mm -hmm. we'll teach you how to make this money. That this is this, this, this. You produce one fish with one thousand. You produce from one fish. You have one thousand mm -hmm. fishes. Tomorrow you become a millionaire. Those things are they realistic? People should start to government should start to bring a lot of control measures into these areas and now find ways to use different. We have Nigerian Director of Employment. Mm -hmm. We have Industrial Training Fund. All of these things are available. They can come in and then mentor people and then. All right. Now, Nigeria's uh, economic prospect, enhancing it, that's what we are looking at. And um, when we look at the situation on ground, economic-wise, you know, and we've seen that, uh, we've established mm -hmm. that building of industries could help. You know, what kind of industries are we looking at here? What kind of industry do you think, you know, should be put in place to help in enhancing mm -hmm our economic prospect. Every sphere, every, uh, at this stage of development, one of the things, one of the challenges we have is that at our stage of development, we have a large population. Very large. A very large population. So we need to start to reset the mind of that population to know that, and the mind of people who are in the real sector, to see this large population as a great potential, as a market. And that market, which you are going to make out of the population, cannot be able to patronize you if they don't have that capacity to buy. That's effective demand. So, first of all, the industry we are going to invest in, the human industry, human capital development. People will have skills so that they can have income. Labor is non-homogeneous. So as you're improving the skill possessed by a labor or a unit of labor, you're increasing the purchasing power of that labor. If I don't have a skill, I don't know. I, I don't know if you. I'm not sure you will know who I am. I'll be somewhere in the market selling on one small thing. So the level, the level of skill we have will improve the level of income, and that places you on a higher strata of the society. Now, you invest first of all in the human capacity, human capital. Improve them through education and health facilities. Then they will not be empowered to now start to demand the product of these industries. Now, the key industries you're talking about here: health sector, educational sector. All right? Now I talk about the manufacturing sector, the real sector, people are producing the tangible things we're talking about. The real sector. Then, infrastructure could be made an industry. It must not come from government. Government and the private sector can provide infrastructure and people will pay. I'm ready to pay my toll on a road 
200 naira per trip or 200 naira daily on that road if that road is well maintained because i know that in one month i may spend more than 7000 or 10000 to, to change fix to cars. fix my car so that's a, that's an investment opportunity so these are industries you can create a lot of industries where people can play active role move this society. Not just the economy. We're talking about sometimes we say this economy, economy as it. If you look at it from the con in the context of a society, because when we say economy, all of us start to look at those people who are into exchange. The relationship between you and your neighbor may go sour, or may not be fair, or may not be fair. <coughs> wonderful because the economy is not good. Sometimes people go to church. They tell you that people the church is always asking us to bring, 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 bring. It's because the the source of bringing is going down because we have been bringing. So once we start to look at it as an economic issue, as an economic problem, we may not get it right. We, start to, we should be looking at it as a completely social problem. We need to invest in these core industries so that this, we will now move to the next stage. We are, remember, we're talking about secondary and primary health care. We now move to the next stage. Tertiary health care, tertiary education, um, um, moving away from primary production to advanced production, service lending, uh, our, finance, our financial institutions, banking industry, our service. Sometimes we see find out that um, um, OCA, OCA on a chart, Navy, I know, I'm not sure you can get up to five or six five star hotels around here. And you're talking about foreign foreigners coming to invest here. Where would they stay? Okay, you know, and um, we we see this uh, issue of um, uh, some companies that have left uh, Nigeria. Nigeria between uh, last in the last year, one year. Yes, in the last one year, I don't know the GSK they've left and so many others. Mm. Where do we see? Or where do we begin? You know, when since these people have left, is, is it possible to call them back, or do we now? Because when they were here, they, they, what GSK is producing? Be, because can be, can because, be produced locally. Okay, because they they were in the country. Because uh, they were in the country, mm -hmm. the drugs were cheaper. Mm -hmm. Now they have left. Immediately they left. Drugs, all the, the drugs skyrocketed. Drugs skyrocketed. So I don't know where we can go from there. You know, what if you we, we have not do. started enhancing mm -hmm. what we have. We are talking about enhancing the prospects of growth. Mm. Go to every department of every faculty of pharmaceutical scientists. Okay. There is a department of traditional medicine. Okay. What have they been giving us? Mm. Go to every faculty of pharmaceutical sciences in Nigeria. There is a department for trado medicine. Okay. Trado pharmacy and whatever. What have they been giving the, us? The ability to produce. Yes, drugs the with research. What we, have. we should start to go into researching. Mm. A lot of people. Have a lot of things to offer traditionally. What 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 glass there are there is this one major unpopular brand of antibiotics that they produce. That the price is jumped up. Mm. But we have antibiotics around our corner everywhere. We would choose to neglect Augment, them. Is augmenting? I don't know the name again. Mm. Don't that maybe yeah, we'll give advice for them. <laughs> now the number one thing we have in your company is antibiotic. The Moringa trees we cut every day and throw away is and can, can boost your immunity that you don't even need antibiotics. Mm. In our olden days, this, this Moringa, we used to use it to prepare yam. Mm. My grandmother would use Moringa and give a goat that just gave birth, and the goat we just recover and everything. Our married women, our, our nursing mothers go to chemists or pharmacy shops to buy after-birth drugs okay. eh? uh -huh. for avoid bleeding and all what thing that helps the woman to recover fully after birth. Moringa is a pure after birth. It's everywhere. And we, and we, we, are, we are... Secondly, <coughs> when, when these big firms go, it's an opportunity for the lo local firms to do what? Take over their markets and increase their production. What are we doing? Their scale of production is large. Mm -hmm. So when they go, Three firms can come together, or even on their own, and fill up that space, and then absorb those persons that are left. But from it's those. not happening. It can happen. It's about the, the people who are around there. If I am in that field, that is an opportunity for me. So we, we are not going to start crying as if uh, there is no hope, uh, like we tell people who are mourning. <laughs> it's an opportunity for us to cover. Why should, why, why, why should 
big firms be producing bottled water in Nigeria, you produce beverages and still produce water. If I'm in government, the first thing I will do, hey, stop production of bottled water, whatever. Let our local firms do it. End at the, that level of uh, soft drinks and whatever. This is a way to empower the local production people. And now, we find that since most of these big firms have started coming down to the primary production mm. to even produce water, how many private or local water plants do you see their product on the market? Those big firms will come and kill everything we have because we want to attract foreign investors. Yes, we want to attract foreign investors, but not to the point that they will produce at that higher level, mm. tertiary production, and still come down to Produce what the small firms can now do the tribe. Okay, the program is Good Morning Anambra, Straight Talk, enhancing Nigeria's economic prospects in 2024 with Bruno Ikevile in the studio. We take a short break here. The program returns after now. Do join us again. Anambra Broadcasting Service. ABS. With delight, we bring you the light that we bear through our illustrious leaders. Our icons. Our industrious people. Our rich culture. Our places of pride. And our mouth watering cuisine. With unbridled professionalism and renewed tenacity, we serve you real time news, information entertainment of varied genres with unfettered reach of your clients and customers. A -B Welcome back to the live studios of Good Morning, Anam Brasho, talking enhancing Nigeria's economic prospects in 2024 with Bruno Ibekilo in the studio. And um, uh, we've come a long way talking about uh, our economy and, of course, what we can do uh, to make it grow or to make it better than what it is today. Now, Bruno. Uh, a lot of people are complaining today of um, high cost of living, high cost of food items. You know, virtually everything is high, high. And when you go to the market to buy something today, the next minute, uh, okay, like somebody uh, on the press review this morning was complaining that uh, he paid, in fact, he has paid uh, some money to the person. Before he could leave that place and get to his office, they called him back that the thing had dead money ahead, that the price has changed. It's, it's no, no longer 100,000, more 140,000. And all these things, you know, happening daily. You know, how do you think people can survive in this situation? Um, the first of all is to understand the, what is happening to us. Mm -hmm. Inflation. That persistent increase in price over time, mm. it has to be persistent over time for you to call it inflation. You know that when prices increase, there was something that was trending over time that was trending in social media. Oh. They said that if you go to shops, that the price on the shelf will be different from the price you be machined at. Yeah. That shows that there is inflation. Serious. Because the prices are changing faster than the, their staff could go around the whole shelf and change prices. Mm. The rate of change in price is faster than the rate of change in the tag. Not that they don't want to change it, but mm -hmm. you can imagine a, a shop as big as this building. So you change it and they have they, more they, see, they seem to be very smart to they have changed it first in the system. Uh -huh. you know, before it's the, easier to the change tag. the system now okay. than before you now walk around. Because every product you see, they have a price tag. Okay. So you now do it for every... Or now, so what they do is just to change it in the system so that when you bring the scan code, 
you see the price. So, though it's, it ought to be done. So, the, one of, I said it earlier that one of the things that is our, the greatest problem we have is that when you have people who should be monitoring a system and they've gone to bed, because when you eat too much, you sleep earlier and you sleep longer time, people who should be monitoring our system have eaten so much and they've gone to bed. Mm. Before we have this level of inflation, the indices will be, will be thrown around you and everybody keeps quiet. And once you say it, you'll be called a, a member of an opposition party. Mm. They are not, you're working against the government. But people should learn how to think like statesmen. Politicians are still thinking like politicians. They should have people who are pro-state, pro-people, mm. and then they listen to them. Having the interest of the Having the interest of the people. That's how statesmen reason and think. Mm. So what we do is to find ways to cushion the system, then employ contractual fiscal policies, which we are not doing yet. Government is still being so bogus. What do you mean spend by that? Fiscal as reducing spending by the okay. government okay. and then encouraging uh, investment. Can you call that cutting the cost of governance? Like that's uh, one of the ways to do okay. it. Okay. That's one of the ways to do it. Okay. Reducing all this unnecessary expenditure, then encouraging production. If I'm in government, what I may do today is to say, okay, I have four cars in my fleet. Let's go with two. How much does one car take? How much do you keep for me for refreshment of my guest in one month? Now, let's take this whole money and give two persons who are producing a shoe. Or give it to a teller who is producing a shirt. Give it to a farmer to till more land and buy more fertilizer. For greater productivity. For greater productivity. These are the sacrifices we expect from those in government, at, at especially at the national level. But they are not doing that, and they are telling us to tighten our belt, that things will get better tomorrow. Then all these other means, before you used to hear about ways and means, the system is going down, the central bank is borrowing money to the states, to this government, and government is thinking the money will keep on borrowing, we need to reduce this borrowing. Because you borrow in dollar, spend it, waste it in Naira, so you need to acquire more dollar to pay back that debt. And how do you get dollar? By exporting. Are we producing enough to take care of ourselves before we start exporting? No. Most countries that we sell our oil to are talking about how to stop use of the use of fossil fuel by 2030. They said it earlier, and we, start, we were seeing 2030, like when Jesus will come. 2030 is just six years away. Mm. And when they stop buying our oil, and we are oil dependent, hmm. what happens to us? We not started thinking differently. At the point, we are all waiting for Dangote to start his refinery. Everybody is waiting for Dangote refinery to come for us to have enough. Eight months after. <laughs> now it is coming on. Dangote is already producing diesel and the aviation kerosene. Hmm. Well, they will give him more money. Hmm. So we are now encouraging him to go into fuel production. So that the amount we are using to import fuel, we now do what? We reduce, then that dollar can be used to service our debt. Our debt to GDP, our revenue this year, mm -hmm. about 80% of them will go to debt servicing. Mm -hmm. So that means we are going to borrow more. So we to are now. Service uh, debt. Yes, we are now borrowing to do our expenditures and then use what we have gotten as revenue to pay our debt. Mm -hmm. So it's, we are now in that debt trap. <laughs> so we need to start doing a lot of uh, contortional things and then boosting that production, to enhance the process, because you cannot grow when you're not producing. You can't. You can't grow. All right. Uh, we are all, all we are saying here is, um, you know, trying to contribute to stakeholders and the economic industry in Nigeria to see whether our economy will improve. Now, what are the challenges you think we face as a nation in trying to enhance uh, the economic prospects of Nigeria? The challenges we face here is what we have been. To, we have this. There is what we call sincerity of objective. Mm. Am I really here to serve and then see this country grow? Grow. Am I really here to bring out, to bring back that Nigeria? I was. I saw one his one one paper in history, where there was a meeting where how Nigeria can borrow money to Britain. 
<laughs> so, how do we reinvent that country, that Nigeria? It's about people who are in leadership. When you say you're a Nigerian and yes, people respect, respect you. you. I remember when we were talking about one dollar being 60 kobo, one dollar being 40 kobo. I'm not talking about, I said the one I know as a little child. My uncle was in the US and they said that he should not work. That there's enough money to take care of him. Hmm. Because what you're going to earn is 60 kobo to one naira. Tenants will pay money in, as house rent. My grandfather will send money there. 60 kobo, I will make it around 84. So we have to start producing first. We have to engineer, re-engineer the productive sector. Channel money to, into the productive sector, not into that waste. Remove all this manner of uh, 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 Western thing around us. The Western man told us to remove our subsidy. We said, yes, subsidy is worth removing because of the corruption around it. Mm. Now, the only social service or social welfare the private man enjoys is off through fuel. Now, we are, having this, we are now under pressure again to remove uh, electricity subsidy. Mm -hmm. So government should find ways to improve that governance. This mechanism of governance needs to be improved upon so that once these flags, these red flags come up, people who are supposed to see it should see it. And that when they, when they talk, haven't seen it, when they talk, that what they say will put into action. Uh, actually, Sincerity. Uh, actually, there is something the paper said today. I think that statement came from Atiku Abubakar, mm. that um, hunger and poverty is fueling insecurity in Nigeria. Mm. And now I want to ask, where do you see Nigeria or what happens in the next five, ten years when nothing is done uh, in respect to enhancing Nigeria's uh, economic prospect? Insecurity will move on. One of the things that happens to you when there is insecurity, one of the things that happens with poverty is insecurity. That, that means that statement no, but, but, from Abubakar is, is actually true. I don't want to discuss Atiku Abubakar because okay. Atiku Abubakar has equally weaponized poverty. How much does he pay his staff in? Uh, in okay, that's state? what that's so what he, he was actually a, he said. He was the vice president of Nigeria okay. under him. So he knew actually. They know the issue is that once you are not on the seat, you know when, when you play draft, those people who are playing the draft may not be seeing everything, but you by the side will be pretending. We now be claiming to be seeing everything mm -hmm. they are not doing right. So, um, what, before what we have is that when you have poverty, crime will increase. They say unemployment leads to armed robbery, prostitution, mm. those little, little things. Now, the youths have graduated. Mm. Unemployment is now leading to insecurity, high level mm. in the hinterland, Abi, mm. in the northern area. Now, it is coming to the front burner. Look at Enugu, mm. look at Abuja, Lagos. look at Lagos. They are coming up. One day they will march into the government houses and that's all right. mm. And we have not seen this. Somebody, one musician said that there is fire on the mountain and nobody seems to be running. Mm. Because they've been kidnapping people, killing people. <sighs> one day they will stop the convoy of a governor and succeed. Mm. One day they will attempt the convoy of the president. That is when you now know there is a full-blown war. Once people are not... Remember what I... The first industry we have to invest in is human capital. No educated sent head who will carry AK-47 and keep in his home to protect himself. Talk more of carrying AK-47 to go and fight the state. The state. Okay? So when you educate a man, you, make, you, you improve the level of sanity. You remove insanity mm. in him. He has a guarantee that his kids could go to school, that his kids could go to a good hospital at good prices. He has a guarantee that he's going to get a job after schooling. I met one guy, a young boy at a very young age. I said, why are you not going to school? He told me that the chairman, the head of this Diakeke, has masters from the university. They've killed the man now. That the head of this Diakeke thing they're doing has masters in the university. So if they're 
head has masters, has gotten first degree and has masters, and come back to do keke, what is he going to school to do? Hmm. Is he not going to school to waste time and still come back to keke? So the number of years he would have spent, spent to learn music. Put, put it in keke. Hmm. And I say keke is not a skill. Capacity to drive keke is not a skill. They should go and think of something to do. And he was arguing clearly that there's no need because everything to them now is how much are you making per day? So we need to start reorientating people to understand that you need to go to school or even go to some, uh, even if vocational training, to acquire what skill. So these are the ways we can now start to, then from there we now start to come to the industries we are going to invest in or encourage, encourage investment in. People need to start producing. We have a lot of wastages. Do you know that about 40% of the food produced in northern Nigeria, the food basket of almost the whole of Africa, goes into waste? One, poor preservation. Two, weak processing capacity. We still carry tomatoes in baskets. By the time a, a truck of tomato moves from the north down here, about 20% is lost. Countries that we are competing with, it is between Nigeria and Egypt, biggest producers of tomato in Africa. Mm. We'll go to Egypt to see the way they carry their tomato. It's a precious product. But here, because we can produce in excess. So a lot of wastage in the system, from the farm to the home, or from the farm to the plant, where it is going to be uh, processed. Mm. So we need to start investing in these areas. A bag of beans is about, it's 5,000 naira here. A bag of beans in, in about 300 kilometers away is about 65,000 naira. So are you saying it is 20,000 20, naira? Difference. For 300 kilometers. And how many bags can one truck carry? So there's a problem on that line. How can we improve the system that will haul it in big quantity so that the unit price of hauling one will drop? The railway, who is thinking about that? Okay, uh, I don't know. We've, we've really talked a lot about this um, economic prospect and I, I'm looking at, you know, as an economist, there, sh there, there should be one basic thing mm. uh, as an economist that a uh, Nigerian nation can actually do to help enhance their economy. I don't know, what actually is that basic thing as an economist? The basic thing we need to do is not an economic thing. Mm, the basic like... thing we need to do is to change the mindset of a Nigerian. Really? To believe in Nigeria. Mm. Ask your child where he wants to be in the next 10 years. Canada. <laughs> so who will, who will buy that Nigerian made good? Okay, okay. <laughs> be, be, okay look, looking at it this way. No, have you noticed it, that? I, I've noticed that. Uh, so, even your children. So yes. There was an opinion pool where... Yeah. People between the ages of 10 and 13 in a secondary school yeah. were asked to what they want to, where they want to be after school. 80% girls, 80% of them said that they want to travel outside Nigeria, make money, then come home and pick their mother. Okay, their mother. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was what shocked me. Okay. Their mother. Mm. And we, I said, what about their father? Have we talked about what actually? is making them not to have that confidence in their, in their country. It's literally, because it's, it's, you, you, it's, we, it's, always it's, say that, we always say that there's no place like West. home. There's no place like First home. First of all, we have to believe in Nigeria. Mm. Two, our leaders need to be, be two like, leaders. Can I, can I shock you? You know, my first son one day said something to me, that everybody is leaving Nigeria, that uh, who is now going to change Nigeria? Nigeria. That was what, mm -hmm. a, a twin, that time he was 22. 20, 21, 22. So along the line, mm -hmm. you know, she, he said, Mommy, I'm not going to live outside mm -hmm. the country. Yeah. But as we speak, I think a few days ago, they had a chat with somebody outside, and he came out and said, Mommy, I'm leaving this country. So, you know, what, what do you think is what going happened on? Was that? What happened and was that? What, what should be done? What happened was so that? Do you blame them? By the time he had this impression about Nigeria mm. and believed that Nigeria must be changed mm. to now, the leadership... It's in the, a space of two, three years. Yes, though. those in government did not give him a hope. Mm -hmm. 
Those in government did not give him hope. So do you now blame as, them? No, you don't blame them. That's what okay. I said. First of all, believe in Nigeria. Mm. Be consistent. Be persistent in, in your belief in, in, belief okay. in Nigeria. Then let the leaders give us hope. Okay. Are you getting me? How? Let the givers give us hope. Mm. By doing what they are supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? How can you be telling me that? Have you been to a laboratory in a federal university? Most of them are in, in bad shape. I saw people who are reading computer science in the university that they don't have access to computers. Hmm. I get it, you know. A computer science student does not have access to computer at will. How can your name be Rufus and your house is leaking, and your roof is leaking? <laughs> You live in a leaky room by your answering the question. All right. All right, Bruno, we, we can actually talk and talk and talk from now until eternity. But um, let's keep hope alive. That let's keep hope we'll alive. We'll begin to, we believe in Nigeria. Let's encourage local production. Okay, let's encourage local, a lot of things actually. But we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Bruno Ibekilo. Uh, head of Department, Economics Department, Chukwe Emeka Odomego, Juku University, Ibarium. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you. And that's a wrap on Good Morning and I'm Brazil for today. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Till tomorrow, it's a goodbye from here. Welcome to the program.